So, good day everyone, this is Miss Srina Mimabute, a second year student. And for today's video, I am going to tackle or discuss about Philippine costume. As you can see in the presentation, there are a lot of design, a lot of arts in every tribe or groups. There are differences, there are differences when it comes to their costumes well there are different or distinct costume from each tribal groups introduction costume as our second skin says poet playwright and filmmaker virginia r moreno in one of her acclaimed essays reveals much about ourselves the high prestige of Philippine poetry claims that what we wear or do not wear conveys who we are as individuals and as a pe people. Philippine costume has evolved throughout the centuries. It may have gone through changes in the different periods of our nation's existence, but it has preserved its, its distinctive elements as a national symbol and treasure so what we wear what we wear what we look is what we are so costume costume there are a certain costume of every tribe that brings or has a sentimental values that cannot be changed it can be it can be enhanced through developing the designs or or adding some more adding some more arts on the symbols or any arts of the costume but there is that one costume or garment that can't be changed since it brings or preserve the elements of every group or in every culture. Motivation question. What is the importance and connections of Philippine costume to our traditional dances? What is the importance and connection? The importance and the connection of the Philippine costume to our traditional dances. First costume is the Barutsaya. Barutsaya is a national dress of Philippines and combines elements from both the pre colonial native Filipino and colonial Spanish clothing style. So, Barutsaya is a combination of elements from pre colonial pre-colonial native Filipino and to colonial Spanish clothing style so that is why it has a it looks like a native or a natural Filipino costume but it also has the style of an Spanish clothing from colonial period colorless blouse as you can see on the picture called baro blouse colorless colorless is this one and so there is no colorless huh no colorless from the word colorless no color in the blouse it's called baro that is the baro and all purpose wrap around skirt metamorphose into the long skirt called saya so the green one, the the baro is the from the right, the from the right, and the, um, the saya is down from the upper right. So it's like a third no. These two pieces ensemble usually supplemented by the ancient tapis used as an overskirt and eventually by the square kerchief called alampai. So the alampai is like that. 
for example, this one. So this is the baro, but there is no color, as if that there is no color. And the saya that I'm wearing, well, this one is the alampay. This one, like that. Wern, so that it covers the blossom. Alampay wern, because it covers the blossoms. The barot saya is more than a dress. It is a representation of the Filipina. The dress is as confident and striking as it is grateful and refined. The next costume is Maria Clara. Maria Clara dress is an elegant formal outfit for women. It is considered a mitz a mestiza dress because it is an ensemble combining indigenous and Spanish influences. So Maria Clara is a combine of indigenous indigenous or old ancient Filipinos and Spanish influences. Maria Clara dress became very popular during the Spanish era since its emergence in 1890. So, have you seen the movie Maria Clara? Have you observed its um, costume or the outfit of Maria? Maria or Clara. Next, in the 19th, was used to refer the 90th century terno. The camisa was made of embroidered dress juicy or pina its bell-shaped sleeves gathered at the shoulder and flowing out the wrist worn with a panuelo of the same material drip around shoulders and with a multi-paneled skirt of heavy sati next is the barong tagalog so we are familiar with this right this is the one that usually or commonly used in a pop dance. Barong Tagalog root word baro pertaining to upper garment literally means Tagalog outfit. It was coined during the early Spanish colonial period to distinguish it as a native attire of Filipinos in contrast to the European style three-piece suits. As what I have said, it is a native attire of Filipinos so it is where for a wedding, it is where for a dance, a folk dance, or in a ceremony, in a formal celebration. Long sleeve shirt, bought on halfway with fancy coins, pearls, and other materials. Regular collar and cuffs, shirt front is embroidered with two panels running, panel from both sides, so panel this one of the chest and meet in the horizontal just as navel line to form a U. Minimal embroidery are scattered on sleeves, front and back. Modifications of these designs are common. Material, piña, sinamay, juicy, cotton, lately nylon, and organza. Organza. So the next one, the next costume of Philippine is Traje de Mestiza. The Traje de Mestiza was, in fact, the Maria Clara, trimmed into a shapely modernity. So, Traje de Mestiza is a um, modern way of Maria Clara. It is modernized. It is modified. Costume from Maria Clara, but the origin of its but the, but the origin of its design is from the Maria Clara. It became popular during American colonial period. The camisa became a clinging Buddhist, Buddhist with sleeves pushed up and the saya deflated to a slim column. The long train which was either pointed, oval or square. I recreated tapis displaying dazzling patterns and the exterior beadworks match the hotter panuelo. 
The next is Balintawak. Costume. Balintawak, a 1930s shortened skirt worn during picnics and other excursion activity into the countryside and associated to Antipolo, a favorite summer destination for Manila dwellers. Less formal style of Filipina native dress which does not make use of a soft or stiff panuelo, but stuff, soft drape kerchief on the shoulders or neatly folded large kerchief over one shoulder. So, a balintawak costume is uh, familiar familiar with, with me. It is familiar with me since I um, I saw some of like a picnic photos and they are wearing like this next a native dress of Filipino women consisting of dress and skirt woven of local fibers with a kerchief and apron to match next is the terno terno from the Spanish word means too much too much a one piece creation with both bodies and skirt. Manuelo less and the bodies became fitted. The silhouette of the traditional barot saya were modified and stylish. Also known as mestiza dress. Camisa. The short colorless upper part or waist length blouse of the Filipino terno. Some were elaborately embroidered on the edges or all over. Usually made of film C material, pina, juicy abaca, or sinamay, renge kanyemaso, an import from Europe, and lately nylon, off white or cream in color. The next one is kimona. Kimona is mostly used by the girls or the women when on buwan ng wika or in a formal celebration or in a ceremony. <clears throat> it is the one that commonly used of most of the people. So what is kimona by the way? Kimuna is typically a transparent piece of clothing made of pineapple fiber, while the skirt is usually either floor length or knee length, printed with a patadyong pattern, hence getting the name patadyong skirt. Also, kimuna is a short and loose woman's blouse with extended sleeves worn on top of a long saya, as you can see on the picture. That is an example of kimuna. Well, kimuna has has a more stylish and modified designs nowadays. But the the old one or the ancient design is more likely on the sample from the presentation. Though the serpenta. Serpenta from the word serpent. It looks like a snake. So, serpenta skirt characterized by a straight silhouette from the waist to somewhere around the knees, where it was cut in a serpentine or snake line fashion, and to which was then attached a wide semicircular bottom panel of the same material cut in bias. Next is the alampay. So, alampay. The panuelo from Spanish panyo and huelo. Or alampay is a Filipino lace-like embroidered neck scarf or shawl worn around the shoulders over the camisa or blouse. They were square-shaped and were folded into half, in half into a triangle when worn. So, for example, this is a camisa. I I mean, this is a lampay. So, 
it is just like this so that the your um inner part your inner part garment or a t-shirt or a sandal can be covered by this and it also looks formal when it has a lampai next is the ilocano peasant costume the traditional ilocano dress made from enabel reflects the admirable qualities of the ilocana her aura of quiet beauty appealing shyness and dignity in her manners she selected colors expressing her modesty and simplicity her typical dress came in a two-piece ensemble blouse the blouse the upper part and the skirt which is the lower part the blouse called kimono as what we have tackled from the previous topic is either plain white or pastel usually with a cowl neckline her full length skirt called pandiling skirt the lower part pandiling is called pandiling is cone shaped with a drawstring around the waist look at the picture and observe the pandiling the cone shaped hand loom woven text with a drawstring around the waist this is made from a hoop woven textiles which she herself has meticulously woven and sewn by hand the designs of the wave are inspired by the things in nature such as diamonds milky way shells and stripes or checkered so the picture or the sample picture is uh like stripe it's a stripe and a checkered and the dress is worn over a full slip called camisole the locano peasant costume the traditional Ilocano dress made from Annabelle reflects the admirable qualities of the Ilocana, her aurora of quiet beauty, appealing shyness, and dignity in her manners. She selected colors expressing her modesty and simplicity. Her typical dress came in two-piece ensemble blouse and skirt. The Tausu costume. The native attire of Atausu consists of bajo, lapi, which is the upper, and the kupot is the pants for boys, while the top of girls are batawi and sablai. Sablai is like a sash. For formal occasion and the sambra and supa supa for daily use. By the way, the pants for the girls are called sawal, which, however, has a different design that would fit to the top, to the top, or the upper part of the costume. The Taosu people are native to the islands of Sulu peoples and have migrated to various parts of southern Mindanao, including Malaysia. So I will just. I'll not just be reading all of this. I will just uh, give a short description or uh, something that reminds us what really a Taosu costume is. So, the female wear pants or the sawal, the sawal, loose Chinese pants with a thin inch soft white pant, coco cordo. The shoulder band, see the siyag, the head pet, the head piece of the female are there are three choices: the gold and brass filigree called tusok, tusok at as what I we have seen in the presentation. The second is the paper bills pasted, pasted on slender sticks, 
And the third one is the pasteboard cut out the front tip 8 to 10 inches. Similarly to Chinese crowns covered with gold foil. So the accessories of female are gold or imitation gold earrings, necklace, bracelet, and brushes. The foot bears is a bare foot. Well, in the aim for the for the male, the top of the top costume of male is baju, baju, baju or baju. This is studded with many tiny brass buttons, and is not intended to close the front bu front, but uses an additional shirt decoration. It is allowed to drop on the right side. With the pants, which is a sowel or a cantlo, accessories similar to the female pants but in darker colors and bolder designs, money belt, saruk hat, piece yabit, woven scarf tied on the head or hung loosely over one shoulder. The footwear same as the female barefoot. So just remember that girls costume in Tauso is more likely uh, a light colors while for for the males they use a darker colors Sobanan Sobanan costume the term Sobanan is given to a group of Philippine ethnic tribes that inhabits areas in Zamboanga del Sur and Zamboanga del Norte Peninsula and the mountain areas of Misamis Occidental on the island of Mindanao Subanin means river dweller. So Subanin is um, from the mountain areas of Misamis Occidental on the island of Mindanao. So the Subanin means river dwellers. Subanin costume from Zamboanga del Norte. Male top is a bahu. It's a fairly long black shirt reaching the upper thighs, as you can see on the picture. Front opening showing red lining. Materials are black cotton or similar type. While for the pants is sawal, moderately loose long pants with drawstrings. A short sarong malong wrapped around the waist reaching down the knees to keep pants in place. For um, also turban, subanon costume as a turban, turban or tubao, rectangular checkered headkerchief, predominantly predominantly maroon or red, folded in a triangle, tied around the head with deep in front, and lastly the suggested footwear is barefoot. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Keep safe and God bless.